YouTube. So here is a cart. You know it's a cart because it says cart in the headstock. If you're a member of any of the Japanese guitar fan club sites, you'll see people got these with lots of different names. Memphis. Oh, I had about five on the top of my head there. There's lots of different brands that use this because cart are like a factory factory owned by Cortec um, in Korea. So they, they uh, you know, they were building they, just now. I think they're building Ibanez and Squires and stuff like that. But they they did have their own. Sometimes they put their own badge on it and then sold it to other shops. So here we've got a rather, I think it looks fantastic. Um, as you can see, it's a through neck. Not a through neck. It's not even bits of wood. It's got like gold go faster stripes, which I think is pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of, um, oops. I think is it, it used to be old Formula One cars. Was it, was it John Player Special Fags or something like that? Used to have, um, I don't, I don't remember watching Formula One, but I remember the Skeletrix set. You used to see the Argos catalog. And there was like a, one, one of the, the, the teams was black with gold bits on it for some, some kind of fags that you don't get anymore. Back when you used to get Formula One cars used to be coloured like fags, remember that? Yeah, so this one has got the original pickups. It's got the steel saddle bridge. It's teletype through strung, two volumes, two tones. Twin, no. Just notice there it doesn't have dots up, so... 15, 17, 19, 21, 22 frets, but no dots in the last two. Don't know why, but maybe, I don't know, I don't imagine that's a cost-saving exercise. It's a style thing, I think. Um, yeah, so this one has a, the tuners replaced with modern ones at some point, so I don't know what the tuners were originally like. Everything else looks to be there and running pretty well. Um, I thought of putting in coil splits and stuff, but I don't know, it kind of doesn't need it. It's quite a... There's an area that looks kind of like this. And also it's kind of um, the Washburn Falcon. Um, it's sort of a copy of that. When I say copy, it's in influenced by, because the Washburn Falcon's kind of a, a copy of a, an Odyssey guitar. But there's lots of guitars that kind of have this sort of vibe going on from the early 80s. I'm assuming this is ah, about 1982, something like that. Um, Back in those days, it was a thing to have super distortion type pickups. Uh, one of the things I find amusing, which I've not actually sorted, I don't really know how to sort, I don't really know if I want to, because I think it's funny. The If you look at where the neck pickup ring it kind of doesn't fit on the guitar, that is the original pickup ring, because as you can see, it's got the two adjustment screws, which means you can angle the pickup, which is a better system, and I've no idea why it didn't take off. Some of the Washburns have it, Corp did it. I think Ibanez Roadster has it as well. Roadster, uh, Ibanez did it in the 80s. Yamaha did it. But now, no. So it's like you get your pickup and it's sitting at a stupid angle. Whereas when you've got three screws, you can tilt it so it matches the strings. Or even, not so much matching the strings. I mean, yes, yes, I don't know what difference that makes. But so many guitars you get, and it's like the pickup just sits at an annoying angle. And you're sitting, you kind of poke it and it goes level. And then it doesn't happen with these, with the three, pick, the three screw pickups. So bring back the three screw pickup, I say. A, 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 an arguably better system. I suppose it must be cheaper to use two because you're using one, you're, instead of using three screws and three springs, you're using two. So uh, how much how much money does that save really? I, mean, I suppose maybe if you're making a million guitars or something, maybe they're looking at it and going, well, we're making a million guitars, we can save one penny on each one, that's um, that, no, a hundred thousand pound in it, so it's like, well, so I suppose, but then you start, where, where, where'd you draw the line with the bean counting? Anyway, I'll shut up and start making some noise, so neck pickup, just using my wee Laney VC15, it's coming through that cabinet, and currently there's no pedals on, uh, I do have a drum pedal that I'm going to turn on, coming through that bass amp, and I've got a loop pedal, which I'm going to use as well, and I've the pedals I will be using for distortion are the Joyo US Dream, because that's my current favourite distortion pedal. And I've got like a Delamo fuzz and a twin note fuzz, which I may put on as well. So next I've got... It's got a really... The, if, if, this isn't going to be a help to anyone. The neck's very similar to what's on my Washburn Hawk. <laughs> no one's got a Washburn Hawk. Um, is it like my SG? Maybe a bit. It's a bit kind of... It's not, it's not 100 miles away from 
being an SG sort of, really. Kind of more than anything else of the big ones. It's more SG, so it's like a flat top. So it's more SG than it is Les Paul. And it's not like a Strat or a Tele or a T3-5, so... Yeah, it's kind of an SG, I suppose. <laughs> Turn the bed the pick up. up. Mm. And then I'll put on a Joy of US Dream because this is the summer guitar I think you want distortion on. Sounds really good. Remember to turn the volume down a little bit so it's not louder than the, the solo over the top. And then don't miss the button. That should be quite a difference here turning down the, the volumes. These must be good pickups. Quite distorted and calm it down a little bit.
Yeah, so this guitar actually plays far better than I, I was expecting it to, or uh, than it should, I think. Um, I don't know if, I don't think these were particularly expensive back in the day, um, but a, a, a decent guitar, well, I can't comment with the tuners, the tuners may have, looking at the back, you can see where there used to be screw holes for the, the rubbishy type of tuners, um, so the upgrade was probably worth it. But the pickups are rocking. Um, the bridge is rock solid, and that's uh, I think that's proper steel saddles. Um, as I said, through strung for better sustain, and boy, it's like, what can you complain about? The frets are really good as well. You know, ain't no, ain't no sharp edges on that, them. Um, whether that's uh, all from the factory, this had fantastic frets, or somebody's done it at some point in the last 40 years, has had it, you know, has had it looked at. There's not really, there's very little almost no wear on the frets. I mean, it's like, I don't think they've been levelled or crowned or sorted out later. It's just look at it, there's, there's the faintest, you know, marks below the cowboy cards, but, you know, not, nothing you would ever notice unless you were being super, 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 super picky and you'd never notice it playing it. So I think that this is, my gut instinct saying this is a guitar that was bought for somebody to learn in the 80s and they, Kind of tried for six months and then it sort of maybe sat on their wall or in the corner of the house for another year and then it went in a bag and went into the attic and then you know it's here because there's very little you know there's a lot of the thing you get with a lot of guitars are kind of of this era are it's it's been sold bought and sold you know 10 times in the in the 80s and the 90s and uh, at that point a guitar like this wasn't particularly desirable probably so that's when people are, you know, painted some stupid colour and decided they're going to try and put a flying V-neck on it or... I, I did that, you know. Everyone does that, they, you know, put cover it in stickers. This one's pretty much... As is, you can tell it's not new. I mean, it's 40 years old, but it really does. So I mean, even, you can look at it, even you play it, like, unplugged. It's got a really nice ringing... thing going on. You know, that's, that's kind of where, where you start. The guitar sounds dead, like when it's not when it's not plugged in. It's not. It doesn't really matter how good the pickups are and stuff like that. How good your amp is, it's never going to sound superb. You better off starting off with a nice ringy. Yeah. So I'm not keeping it though. Um. Actually, before in fact, I'm going to pause this and then I'll go and get the Washburn Falcon and see how similar it actually is, rather than doing another video to do that. So pause. Right, so I've magically been through next door and picked up the Falcon. So this is a Washburn Falcon. Um, you can see the, let's get the, the stripes, although in this case it makes it because it's a through neck. These were, when they were about, they were super popular, sort of, but they became very popular once after the first couple of years, because they only made these for like three years, like this, you know, that's a solid rosewood inch thick top on it. Um, so there's lots of, not so say copies, but it's very much the fashion of the time. The, you know, even the, I should even say that the bridge saddles on this look kind of the same as what's on this. So that's the, not, look, it's not quite the top of the range. There's, there's an eagle, which is basically the same, but more binding, but you know, the, the highest end. Um, but let's look, look in there, I've actually got this one. This is a Washburn Raven, which is the, the smallest of the wing range from 1981 or something like that, I don't even know. I got it in a terrible state, so it's been stripped. I'm going to put P90s in it and call it an Osprey. But um, so this is your neck. This is kind of not far off. This you can see the shape's not quite the same. There's also there's an Aria Pro called a YS, which is more this shape. It's like you know, it's like you get the two horns and it's like they're not quite the same shape. There's a Hondo as well, which isn't as pretty as this one. The Hondo's got kind of shorter, stumpier things. It's, it's, I, find, I find this an, an, a very aesthetically pleasing guitar. Um, I don't normally like black guitars, but the gold Go Faster Stripes are doing it for me. Um, it kind of gives it a an era of class, and the fact it plays really well, really. Um, 
this saved um, was saved by Buckfaster Buckfasterification. I'm not making, not painting it because it's too nice. Um, so I'm going to stick this up for sale. But this um, fantastic playing guitar. I'm kind of hoping that I managed to find somebody who had one of these in the 80s as their first guitar and wants it back, so they'll pay more money for it. If, if you're looking at this video and it's like, oh, I used to have one of those very, very guitars for sale, and you can, and I don't know, comparing it to modern guitars, I don't know. So it's not, it's not an even, even playing field. I was told this before about the old Antoria guitars. In the 70s, if you went and tried one in the shop, they weren't really that good. Whereas now they're amazing because they're 40 years old, so the wood's all crystallised and got used to vibrating and stuff and dried out and all these things. So I think this. There's an element of if you bought, see if you made it exactly the same now as this, this one would be better because it's 40 years old. Assuming it's not 40 years old of getting smashed about on stage and rusting and stuff, which this one doesn't really suffer from any of, it, any of that. Um, there's not really any, okay, there's a few there's a few dents on it, but no big gouges. Dents, but no gouges, that makes sense. And I, feel, I suppose if you, if you hold it up to the light, I'd imagine it's probably, I even even said it was particularly scratchy. Yeah. If you really wanted to, you could tea coat it. Because that, that stripe is in below the lacquer, I think. So you could probably just tea cut and it wouldn't take the stripe off. See the way the stripe fades the bottom there? That's pretty cool. That's because that's where they were sanded in the top, wasn't it? Yeah. So, cart, not actually sure of the model number, but it kind of puts a lot to um, rest about these actually being cart, because you see them all the time. I've seen these advertised as washburn wings because it's either the, the trust rod cover has isn't there or it's just a blank one or it's got someone else's badge on it. See, look, the headstock's in amazing shape as well. It's like, I don't even know what you would call that. It's kind of, it's its own thing. What's that headstock shape a copy of? Nope, nope, it's its original body shape. You know, like an area YS or a washburn wing or... Suppose sort of maybe a double cut Les Paul, maybe kinda. 